Welcome to the first round of the second annual Greenbrier Classic, where big names teed off today like Phil Mickelson, Tom Watson, and returning champ Stuart Appleby. Iron Lethwich will leave Hinesville with the Steelers to head to Dallas for Super Bowl 45, but the backup quarterback says he'll take his experiences from past championship games with him to Texas. The Marshall men's basketball team will look for its fourth consecutive win tomorrow night when Tulsa comes to Huntington. Welcome to the first Friday night of high school football. We are live here at Huntington High. I am now joined by the Highlanders head coach, Billy Seals. Coach, we talked a little bit about it. In Griddle Rama, you beat South Charleston 34 to 20. What can you take from that scrimmage? Our 13 sports Amanda McCall has been monitoring the hearing all afternoon. She joins us live at the courthouse with more. So what is the latest, Amanda? Well, Sandra, the latest is right now the attorneys are finishing up. They're having their oral arguments to finish up for the day. But I can tell you it's been a long afternoon. Over three hours we were in the courtroom today hearing both sides of this case. Now there were 10 witnesses in all called today. Hi, Scott. That's right. Believe it or not, I am not one of the tallest people here. There are a lot of big guys and big names that college coaches are trying to land. You can call them the Timberwolves dynamic duo, double trouble, or the terrific tandem. As teammates Autumn Ross and Kylie Purdue are trying to serve up another state championship title for the Spring Valley Volleyball. Team. They're also this week's St. Mary's Medical Center Athlete of the Week. Pat White is known as one of the best college football players across the nation. In fact, he's in the running for the Heisman Trophy. To anybody else, that's pretty impressive. But to his younger brother, Coley, he's just Pat. All right, Coach, before I let you get out of here, we're going to show everybody your shoes. We were talking about lacing it up earlier today. If you're a Packers fan or a Huntington High fan, I guess you're set, huh? Yeah, definitely. I, I bought these uh, before the season started. I've been made fun of throughout the building. But uh, I love them. They're comfortable and they're Huntington High Green. They look great, Coach. Good luck to you tonight. Thanks. Welcome to week two of the Suttling Sports Zone. We had power outages, <laughs> electrical fires, a heat wave, and believe it or not, there was some football in between. I'm Amanda McCall alongside Spencer Atkins. Spencer, let's get back to the first week, though. There were some, you know, lopsided scores, but I think as the season rolls on, that's definitely going to change. Yeah, that's right. But tonight, the Patriots crossed the border and headed to Ashland, Kentucky. We'll start with George Washington up six to nothing. Ashland with the ball. Quarterback Sam Hunter airs it out to Cody Winthrow, gets to the one yard line. Tomcats capitalize. Hunter with the quarterback keeper. Two point conversion is good. Ashland takes the eight to six lead. But hold on. We'll move to the second quarter. George Washington pulling out all the stops. Patriots punting away or are they? Ryan Switzer keeps it and keeps the drive alive for George Washington. They would take advantage of it. Fourth down and six to go. Trevor Bell wow. finds Malik Hansen. He hauls it in for the touchdown and George Washington. He's pretty pumped about this. Goes on to win it. Eight to 14. On Monday, we introduced you to Mike Janik, Scooter Berry, Jason Gwaltney, and Thomas Claiborne, four former college football players preparing for Pro Day. I had a chance to work out with them for an entire day and learn more about their schedule. First up, a Pilates class working the core of the body. I mean, these boys have played football since they were, you know, eight and nine years old, and so all this kind of training wasn't available to them. And so as they go forward and they get into the next level in the NFL, they're going to find that they're going to have to use all of these strength and especially their core. I concentrated on not falling over, but you really do feel the burn without any weight. Don't worry, though, there are weights coming up. Going where no woman has gone before, the man cave, more commonly known as the hit center, where these guys work on their technique. There is little downtime in between each rep, and you add more weight as you go. You might have struggled on that last one. <laughs> then the players practice the 40-yard dash, a big part of Pro Day and the NFL Combine. Speed director Dan Pickens explains it's not as simple as line up and run. The easiest way to think about it is to step up and step down on the ball of your foot and turn is it over. Is almost coming over like I would do hurdles? Like a hurdle? Kind of. Okay. Kind of it straight up and around, and what you'll look like when you come out is that guy on the wall. Looking something like that. Next, it was on to Butch Hiles' martial arts and boxing studio. Chris will be our instructor, and the first thing he says to me, and I quote, if you still like me after this workout, you're crazy. Words of encouragement. This was a full body workout with agilities and push-ups that seemed like every minute. I stopped counting at about around 300. But one thing about working out with these football players is that they're constantly motivating each other as they train. After an hour and a half, it was my favorite part of the day, hitting the bag. What should I do with my hands? I don't know what to do with my hands. I got taped like up and some instructions, and we went in five-minute rounds. After that, the day was finally done. And to say this was a workout is probably an understatement after 12 hours. 
And for these guys, they get up the very next day and do it all over again. Of course, I want to thank the players and trainers for allowing us to follow them an entire day. Now, from the NFL to NBA, a former Marshall basketball player is involved in one of the biggest trades. We'll have more on that coming up tonight at 11. The Women's Motocross Association is also in town for its championship series. Look no further than top of the standings to find an impressive story. Amanda McCall joins us live from High Point Raceway in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania with more. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Scott. I don't think I could get any closer to the track right now. Now, looking at this weekend's competition, there is one racer tomorrow who will be making noise in Mount Morris, but she won't even know it. And here's why. The normal sounds of a race means nothing to motocross racer Ashley Filick. The women's pro rookie champion from last season has been deaf her entire life. Her parents have not only been her translators, but also her inspiration. My, well, my dad, he grew up racing, and then, you know, he brought me to a race, and, and I just, you know, I really got into it. You know, I just fell in love with the sport, and my mom and dad, you know, can I race? Can I have a bike? And they said, yeah, sure you can, you know. You know, my mom and dad, they never thought about me being deaf. They just pushed me to do whatever I could do, whatever I wanted to do. Since Ashley can't hear, she uses her surroundings. I learned how to shift the bike by vibrations, and I just got used to it. And, you know, it just doesn't matter to me that I'm deaf. I just go out there and do it. But there are times Ashley just has to deal with her disability. Sometimes a disadvantage, I think, you know, I have to hold my lines. I can't change my lines because I don't want to hit somebody, you know, so I have to kind of make sure I know where they're at. So I use my peripheral vision for that. You know, I've hit neutral a few times because I can't hear, and I went over the bars, and that's not a good thing. So. Still, Ashley never gets discouraged and always stays determined. This season, the 18-year-old is the only girl on her team. She's constantly raising the bar, and it's pretty simple on what keeps her motivated. Oh, well, winning, of course. <laughs> That's really fun for me. I really liked winning. You know, I have different goals. Like every year, I set up different goals for myself. You know, I wanted to be the first girl to maybe qualify for the boys, so now I try to compare my lap times. I wanted to be the first girl on a factory team. You know, I made that goal. So it's just like different goals every year that keeps me going. Now, as you can see and here behind me, we're having a little bit of the practice rounds going on. Tomorrow, opening ceremonies will start at 12.30 here in Mount Morris, PA. Reporting live at the High Point Raceway, I'm Amanda McCall. Scott, let's send it back to you.